I just want to start this video by saying that I'm very privileged to be part of this amazing online photography community. Honestly, I've met so many great people and I've shot with so many great people over the years and the longer I do it, the more impressed I am with how great this community is. However, saying that, the longer I do photography, the more emphasis I put on shooting by myself, completely alone, not with anyone else. And I honestly do think that being able to shoot on your own is incredibly important. In this video, I'm gonna share with you a few reasons why I personally think shooting on your own will have a huge benefit for you and your photography. Let me just start by saying that there's nothing inherently wrong with shooting with other people. As a matter of fact, I encourage you to reach out to other photographers within your local community, build relationships, meet up and shoot together because it's such a good way to see how other people take photos, how they use their cameras, how they set their cameras. You will learn so much. So I'm definitely not saying you should only shoot on your own. As a matter of fact, I shoot with friends many times each month. However, I would argue that at least 50% of your photography should be done on your own. Now, if you're an introvert like myself, it's so much easier. However, if you're extroverted, then yeah, it might take a bit of practice and a few little bits and bobs that you can do to make shooting on your own a bit more fun. Whenever I go on photo walks with any of my friends, I usually just end up chatting so much that my attention slowly drifts away from photography to even just looking for compositions and my entire focus ends up being on the conversation with the person that I'm with. What's he listening to? I then find myself walking for at least a mile without having taken any single photo or even looked for any photos. When you are alone, you're 100% focused on looking for photos, scanning the scene, trying to find compositions, looking for good light. Your attention is not split between trying to do all of that and maintain the conversation with someone else. Doing this now and again is not an issue. However, if every time you go out to take photos, you're only going with other people, then the actual time that you spend on photography is so little. And as we know, the only way to get better at photography is to focus on photography. So the more you go out with other people, effectively the longer it will take you to get better at this craft. Another aspect of this is how many times have you lot gone to take photos together only to then end up in each other's way and then getting in each other's frame? Obviously not on purpose, but sometimes you're trying to work around your friends who are, you know, without knowing in your shot. And finally, everything I've mentioned only gets amplified the more people you shoot with. Let's just say you and your friend are walking down the road, you both see the same photo. You go to take a composition from a higher angle, your friend goes to take a composition from a lower angle. You then start to doubt yourself. You're thinking, why is my friend taking that composition? Is that better than mine? So you then go see what your friend is doing and end up taking the same photo. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but if you're doing it all the time, you get into a position where you're just taking other people's shots and other people are doing the thinking for you and that's not really a good place to be. Another example is if you go to take a photo and then your friend starts giving you advice. Now obviously that advice is coming from a very good place and it's probably very good advice. However, if you're always being given advice and you're not having any time to think for yourself, that will seriously limit your progress within photography. So I do think having a degree of independence and not relying on seeing how other people shoot and getting feedback from other people constantly is a very good thing.
those of you who love to travel alone will definitely relate to this point and that is when you're shooting with other people you always have to respect their time and their wishes so let's say for example you're out you see your favorite street in London or anywhere in the world the light is incredible you get excited you really want to take some photos and you're busy working in the scene trying to find the composition trying to find the subject but your friends a bit bored it's not their cup of tea or they need to get home quickly and even though I'm sure they're absolutely fine with you taking five 10 minutes to get a photo in the back of your mind you are still delaying them in the back of your mind you're still thinking oh man they're waiting for me I better hurry up and this hurrying up is gonna really impact you in a negative way because not only are you gonna settle for a mediocre photo but worse still you'll just you'll just say you know what I'm not getting any good photos my friends waiting for me I better hurry up I'll come back here next time and if you waited another five minutes you probably would have got a great photo as I've said before now and again this is not an issue however if this becomes a habit every time you go out and every time you're always waiting for other people or sorry other people are waiting for you then you do need to seriously reconsider about shooting with other people at least all the time This applies more to street photography and any kind of photography within an urban environment rather than landscape or anywhere where there's not really that many people. But when you're out with a group of people, if it's any more than two or three of you, man, you really do stand out because at the end of the day, people see a group of photographers walking around and they're wondering what on earth is going on. And because everyone's a bit on edge in terms of just the general public about a group of photographers, you will no longer get any candid moments because people will cross the street, people will stare at you. And overall, you just feel like everyone is looking and everyone is aware that you're there as a photographer and people are obviously wondering why on earth there is a group of three or four lads with cameras walking around. So this is something to keep in mind if you're doing street photography. It's one of the main reasons that a lot of street photographers actually shoot on their own most of the time and they'll socialize now and again with other photographers. Now this also becomes an issue if you are taking photos in let's say a location which is quote unquote private like here in London where there's loads of security walking around and if they see a group of you these security guards are very bored they usually don't have much to do so they'll come and tell you how important they are and again it's one of these things if you're on your own you probably will not attract as much attention. So it's one of those if you want to go out and not sort of attract attention, blend in more, then you just gotta go on your own. This last point can be applied to just about anything. You see, in today's mad, rushing world where everything is rush, 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 you're always switched on with social media. There's always something going on, and I think today's culture is definitely all about being busy. I think if you are always doing something, then that's a good thing. In this culture, how often do we have time to just think? To literally not be doing anything in particular and just be completely on our own with our own thoughts. And the more you think about it, you'll realize it's not very often. And with photography, if you're going out on your own for let's say an entire day, you're walking around the city, you're getting some good exercise, both physically and mentally because you are left to your own devices. I mean, at the start, sure, you are paying attention, trying to find a composition, but after a while, that definitely becomes more like an autopilot. Certainly for me, it's now an autopilot sort of subconscious reaction to just look for photos. And the rest of the time, I am just me with my thoughts. I think my problems through, I think my plans through, I come up with my best ideas. I have my phone in my pocket with my notes open so I can write any ideas down. Down because these ideas will come to you when you are kind of chilled out on autopilot a bit like being in a shower so having this time is very important I think and it's definitely good both physically and mentally as well now obviously if you are an extrovert then this might become a bit of a challenge so what I recommend is having an audiobook or a podcast at least that way you feel like there's someone with you and you can actually learn something as well and failing that a bit of music 
Now and again, I listen to music when I'm out taking photos and it's a great way to switch off. And that is all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. So a quick recap, shooting with other people is fantastic. I definitely recommend it. However, I do recommend that at least 50% of the time you are shooting on your own for various reasons, including not being distracted, not getting in each other's way, taking your time, staying inconspicuous, and just having some time to yourself to think things through and properly just tune in into the experience of walking around and taking photos. As always, I look forward to reading your comments down below. If you like the video, give it a like. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing and I will see you in the next video. It's been Emotional, stay safe and see you in a bit.